Well, it's another very warm welcome back, all my loyal YouTube subscribers, and thanks once more for tuning in to Classic Dirt Bike TV. Now, in this part five video, we are going to take our last look at the final races from the Scottish Classic Motorcycle Racing Club's Grand National Classic Scramble, which was held in the grounds of the historic Drumlandrig Castle in Thornhill, Dumfries in 2017. Now our next race is at race 11 from the Sunday's racing programme of events and this is the pre-1968 uh, team race. Now once again teams of four riders racing against each other with the emphasis being to get all of your riders across the finish line to score points. Now this is just the first of four team races that we're going to take a look at as our race starter Darren Hudson takes up position as these riders are uh, good to go as they leave the line it looks like uh, every rider's made the first two or three turns uh, without incident so we just look to the far side of the track to pick up our race leader in this uh, pre-1968 team race this of course is race 11 for the Sunday's uh, racing program it looks like it's Peter Holland's head on that SRM BSA who is your race leader on the outside there is number 98 that's Liston Bell looks like John Griffiths is in third place Adrian Lappin is behind him David Wilson going through Steve Dent is in there on the Faber BSA uh, Barry McKee also going through on the CZ bike the CZ frame with the BSA motor but here is your race leader, number 98, Liston Bell, who is riding for the team at Piston Broke. <laughs> he must have been up all night thinking up that one, but uh, that was uh, Liston riding for the team at Piston Broke, along with Keith Barnes, Ian Stainton and Lewis Bell. Now we're looking at number 454, that's uh, Peter Holland's head just going through. Uh, coming up the hill is number 31, that's Pierre uh, Dehan from... Uh, France on his uh, BSA riding for the team AMD uh, Motorsports. So you have to remember that this is a team event but uh, riding at the front at this moment in time is still number 98 that's uh, Liston Bell riding the 500 uh, Jawa. Uh, close behind Liston is uh, looks like it's John Griffiths on that Cecil Pearson Rickman Jap and these bikes have been riding absolutely superbly here all weekend at Drumlandrig Castle and that's thanks to the uh, workmanship of uh, Cecil Pearson who maintains and uh, puts these bikes together. Peter Holland's head once again number 454 riding for Team JME Engineering. Uh, it looks like uh, Peter has some kind of mechanical issue with that uh, very nice SRM uh, BSA bike. Although as it stands on the track, here is your race leader, number 98, uh, Liston Bell, on that uh, 1964 uh, 500 Jawa machine. Uh, Liston, of course, is one of Scotland's uh, top uh, vintage and classic racers, of course, along with his uh, younger brother, Lewis, we have some very good uh, battles on the racetrack when the, both the brothers are racing against each other. John Griffiths going through in second position. In third here is uh, number 441. That's Adrian Lappin, also from Northern Ireland, on another of those uh, flying Rickman Jap machines. Methanol uh, fuel is used, of course, in these big single cylinder jack bikes. Number 77 is David Wilson on the BSA, also from Northern Ireland. Looking at number two there, that's uh, Barry McKee. Now that's the bike I was uh, talking about earlier. This is a, a CZ uh, chassis and uh, Barry has slotted in uh, a BSA B40 engine. So it's a CZ frame with the British made uh, BSA motor. And so it looks like we have a new race leader in this pre-1968 team race. It's uh, number 78, that's John 
Griffiths from Northern Ireland on the Jap, who is now your new race leader. Liston Bell is in second position. Remember, this is a team race, so it's uh, more important to get every one of your teammates across the finish, and finish line rather than uh, be first uh, to uh, make the pole position. But it's still John Griffiths from Northern Ireland who leads uh, Liston Bell. So it's the uh, Rickman Jap versus the uh, big 500 uh, Jawa bike. Number 77 again is David Wilson riding for the team AMD uh, Motorsports. David Wilson on his uh, BSA. David also occasionally rides his uh, CZ machine but is using his BSA this weekend here at uh, Drumlandig Castle. So it's a good battle here at the front between John Griffiths, number 78, and Liston Bell, two very talented uh, riders. Uh, John Griffiths from Northern Ireland and Lewis, of course, from uh, Scotland. So a good battle here for the front runners of this 1968 team race. Team race, sorry. But we have seen some very good racing from both these uh, riders over the course of the weekend here at Drumlandig Castle. And uh, as you can see, they're still uh, locking horns with each other and having a right old uh, dice out there. Uh, Liston moving from one side of the track to the other to just try and gain a little bit more uh, of uh, a bit of ground on that uh, Rickman Jap of John Griffiths. These uh, Rickman Japs are a very unique collection and Cecil Pearson has, I think, at this moment in time about seven or possibly even eight of these bikes in his collection. So, a very rare collection of bikes indeed. We're looking at number 77 again, David Wilson, uh, riding for uh, Team AMD Motorsports. Looks like David's doing very well on his old uh, BSA. So we're just uh, looking to pick up our race leaders at the top of the track. It's still number 78, John Griffiths, who leads number 98, Liston Bell. Uh, this, of course, is just one of uh, four uh, team races that we're going to feature in this last and uh, final part five video here at uh, Drumlandig Castle. And so as a race leader, starts his last and final lap. It's still John Griffiths in first position with Liston Bell in second. And of course it's thanks to uh, Fraser Dykes and all his team for securing this venue for this weekend of classic racing and uh, supplying of course all the infrastructure in order to make the event uh, go ahead. So it looks like it's a win for number 78 John Griffiths with Liston Bell from Scotland in second. Okay, next up we're moving on to race 12. This is the pre-1975 team race. Another one of those uh, team events where you have to try and get all of your team members across the line to score valuable uh, team points. So as they uh, start at the line and uh, make their way to turn one, it looks like another cracking start by that Northern Irishman, James Thompson, on that Cecil Pearson Jap, Scott Maxwell, is in there in second place. John Fleming's made a good start, but it looks like Harry Stitt has taken that third place position as they come towards. So it's uh, number 11 there, it's James Thompson, riding, of course, a different bike from he raced earlier on. Second is Scott Maxwell, third is Harry Stitt. Keith Barnes going through there. Some very quick riders in this pre-1975 team race. So an absolutely beautiful day here at Drumlandig Castle for the Sunday for this type of classic racing. So it's uh, James Thompson who leads number 58, Scott Maxwell. Third is Harry Stitt. Fourth now is Keith Barnes on the Clues Stroker as they head towards the far side of the track. As the dust begins to fly 
in these uh, closing races of this two-day event at uh, Drumlandig Castle. So once more we look for our race leader and it is now uh, Scott Maxwell on that big 600cc uh, CCM. This uh, Alan Clues derives bike of course. Alan Clues uh, bought over the defunct BSA competition department in 1971 and went on to build some of the country's best four-stroke uh, scrambles machines. Second is still James Thompson on the Rickman Jap. Coming through in third is Keith Barnes who is riding superbly on that clue stroker. Number 180 is Archie Beard. Harry Stitt number 111 going through. Coming towards is number 3, that's Tommy Anderson on the 1975 Husqvarna. Number 125 is Ian Stainton. Number 1, John, John Fleming going through on the big 380CZ. But it's uh, local Thornhill man, number 58, Scott Maxwell, who is your race leader. Second coming through should be uh, James Thompson, number 11. Of course, uh, James was riding uh, bike number 26 in the earlier races, but uh, obviously has some mechanical problem with that particular race bike, so uh, Cecil has uh, given him his own personal bike. This uh, number 11 bike was the very first Rickman Jap that Cecil uh, put together. So we're looking at the third place man, that's Harry Stitt. John Fleming is now up into fourth position. So a good race developing in this pre-1975 uh, team race. Just behind John Fleming there is number 29, that's uh, Derek McCauley from Arbroath in Scotland on the Baltaco Persang. But as the laps count down, this is uh, again James Thompson riding uh, Cecil Pearson's uh, very personal number 11 bike. Uh, third place, sorry, is uh, Keith Barnes on the Clues Stroker. Keith, of course, is the son of uh, CCM uh, racing legend uh, Mike Barnes. So as you can see, it runs in the family for these big uh, CCM racing machines. Now there is uh, number 11, that's uh, James Thompson again. It doesn't seem to be any sign of our race leader Scott Maxwell, so I don't know if Scott's maybe had some kind of mechanical issue, but it looks like it could be at number 11, James Thompson, who's your new race leader, but Keith Barnes is riding out of his skin on that uh, number 55 bike, the Clues Stroker, but here is Scott Maxwell. Now, I don't know if Scott's maybe uh, went off track uh, momentarily, but is back up and running uh, once again. Now we are looking at number 111, that's Harry Stitt, who seems to have some kind of problem with the handlebars. It looks like the handlebars have come uh, loose and have uh, dropped down, but uh, Harry being the racer that he is, he's hanging on there and trying to nurse this Jap home to get some uh, valuable points for the Team Jap Northern Ireland. So that's Harry Stitt, number 111. So I think this is your new race leader, it's number 11, James Thompson on uh, Cecil Pearson's Jap. Keith Barnes looks like he's in second position now. Now Keith is riding really well on that Clues Stroker. These Clues Strokers of course were the very first bikes that Alan Clues ever put together when he first took over the BSA competition department. Uh, number one there is uh, John Fleming on that uh, tricked up AMD Motorsports uh, CZ. So as we just look to pick up our race leader, it's still number 11. That's uh, James Thompson from Northern Ireland on the Jap. Harry Stitt still nursing that uh, Jap with the droop down handlebars, he's still nursing it round the track to try and get 
valuable uh, points but it looks like uh, it's going to be a win for this man here number 11 uh, James Thompson uh, you can just see Harry Stitt going through hanging on to that bike with looks like a set of clip-ons he's just, <laughs> he's just uh, bolted onto the bike but as our front runners head through to complete their last and final lap it's going to be a win for James Thompson in first position and just coming through is number 58 that's Scott Maxwell Okay, next up we move on to race uh, 13. This is the Twin Shock over 50s uh, team race. As you can see, the weather absolutely superb here for the Sunday afternoon at Drum Landrig Castle. But it's been a fantastic uh, weekend of uh, racing as our uh, riders wait at the start gate to be let loose by our race starter, Darren Hudson. He's just uh, giving them all the thumbs up to make sure every rider's bike is running so we are now under starters orders it's head down and elbows up as they uh, leave the line but it's another good start it looks like uh, Willie Burgess has made a fantastic start at the front there number two so as they head up the hill it's Willie Burgess in first position second Paul Kiapa third looks like it's Chris Cannon as they all uh, make the turn into uh, turn three and head back down to the centre of the track. Now this of course is another uh, team race but nevertheless it's a race all the same. So as we look to the far side to pick up our race leader it's still at uh, number two Willie Burgess from Northern Ireland who's already opened up a substantial gap in this first half a lap. Second is uh, Paul Kiapa from Scotland who's riding very well here this weekend on the 81 490 Michael but it's Willie Burgess number two who has the early lead in this lap one just coming through there is uh, Paul Kiapa and Chris Cannon I'm just looking to pick up our uh, fourth placed rider just uh, unfortunately can't make out their racing numbers from this distance but uh, Everybody looks like they're uh, enjoying themselves as the track dries sufficiently for the rest of the afternoon's race programme. Number 18 and number 43, that's Jim Colligan and uh, Andy Malak on that 83, four, sorry, 500cc Armstrong. Oh, look. <laughs> and once again, the curse of the commentators has uh, struck again and Andy hits the deck. But here is your race leader. It's number two, Willie Burgess from Northern Ireland on that uh, flying uh, German Michael. Willie, very, uh, Willie, a very good rider who also races Evolution bikes in Northern Ireland. Now uh, just uh, coming towards us now, uh, number 180, that's Dale Burrows from uh, the USA who has flown over spe specially for this uh, race event. Number 18 is uh, Jim Colligan from Uchter Machti in Fife. A nice uh, Scottish uh, name there for you. So Jim having a good tussle with one of his uh, racing friends at the front there, that's uh, Mike at Van der Meer. So as we wait on our race leader crossing the line, it's still Willie Burgess, number two from Northern Ireland, who is leading this uh, Twin Shock over 50s team race. Uh, Paul Kiapa is in a fantastic position there in second position. Paul, of course, uh, a multiple Scottish Twin Shock champion. I think. Uh, He's won the championship about 17 times at least that I know of, so uh, a very uh, quick rider is uh, Paul Kiapa. Chris Cannon going through there, number 81 on the RM400 Suzuki. Another uh, talented twin shock uh, racer. 
We'll just pick up a few more of the riders as they make the turn. Dale Burrows going through there again, number 180 uh, from America. So it's good of Dale to make that effort to come across to Drumlander Castle to take part in this uh, grand national uh, weekend. Now Dale is riding a CR500 Honda that belongs to Scotsman uh, Archie Baird. So Archie has loaned uh, Dale his uh, race bike for the weekend. Now here is your race leader, it's still Willie Burgess, who is uh, lapping this Drumlander Castle uh, racetrack at uh, a fair rate of knots, but uh, looks like Willie's on uh, course for another good win this afternoon. So as a lap's uh, countdown in this Twin Shock Over 50s uh, team race, it's still uh, Willie Burgess, uh, number two, who is your race leader. Willie has almost uh, led this race from the start gate thus far. So uh, providing there's no any mechanical issues with his uh, Michael, it looks like it could be a nice uh, easy win for uh, Willie Burgess in this uh, particular race. So as he starts his last and final lap in this uh, Twin Shock over 50s team race, it's uh, your race leader is still Willie Burgess, number two. Uh, number 180 once again is uh, American uh, Dale Burrows riding that 500 Honda that uh, belonged to Archie Beard. So it's a win for number two, Willie Burgess from Northern Ireland. Okay, next up we are moving on to uh, race uh, 14. This is a twin shot under 50s team race. These are the uh, relatively young pups of the twin shot world here, the under 50s. But uh, once again, some very talented riders in this uh, pack. We have uh, David Houston, number 147 there, is the winner of the last under 50s races. That's Gavin Robertson. Uh, Michael Smith there, number uh, 18. So look out for another good race from uh, these guys in the under 50s team race. And looking at Gavin Robertson there, remember Gavin has uh, won almost all of the under 50s uh, races this uh, weekend. But uh, as the under starters orders, once again heads down, elbows up and they're away. And it's another cracking start by Gavin Robertson on that Bill Brown sponsored 490 Michael. And so as they head into the wooded section of the track, it's number 147. It's uh, Gavin Robertson, who is once again your race leader of this Twin Shock under 50s class race. Second looks like it's David Houston. Third looks like it's uh, Michael uh, Smith. Uh, Craig Smith just going through there on the Michael as the rest of the chasing pack make their way up the hill and into the sunshine here at Drum Landed Castle. And so as the laps count down a race leader is still this man here, number 147, Gavin Robertson, who has a quite substantial lead already on the second place man. Uh, still looks like it's uh, number 18, I think that's uh, Michael Smith coming through. Uh, third is uh, David Houston on that Tony Keg 480 Honda. Next rider up should be Alan Bott, number 174. Alan Bott, of course, from Wigan. Also coming into view is number 25, that's Craig Smith, who is doing really well on that uh, old uh, Michael. As you can see, the weather has uh, 
improved vastly from the damp, uh, sticky, wet conditions we had uh, on the Saturday's uh, race event. Number 97 there, that's uh, Alistair Henderson going through on the uh, Husk Vlama. But it looks like our race leader Gavin Robertson is looking uh, good for another win of the day on that Bill Brown Michael. Gavin absolutely flying on that uh, German twin shot machine. Craig Smith there, number 25 from uh, Dunfermline. Uh, this part of the track up the hill began becoming uh, quite hard and rutted uh, this uh, later stages in the day. So we're just looking to pick up uh, Gavin Robertson again who was a uh, race leader in the last lap as he comes through and across the tabletop so there is your race leader looks like yeah, Michael Smith's got a, a bit of a move on there and he's heading uh, up to challenge uh, Gavin Robertson but as the rest of the riders make their way through the woods and across the tabletop but the weather conditions just improving by the minute here at Drumlandrig and uh, it's no more than these rider de riders deserve after uh, two days of uh, racing. Uh, number 136 who looks like Daniel McNally has a problem with his uh, husk Vanna as we look at our second place rider who just uh, going through yeah it looks like a gearbox problem for uh, Daniel uh, McNally number 148 David Houston just going past so it looks like uh, Daniel's uh, weekend is now finished so here is our race leader of this twin shock under 50s team race it's number 147 it's the man from Resyth in Fife Gavin Robertson we're just waiting on our race leader emerging from the woods once again looks like there's no stopping uh, this man on that uh, Michael this weekend he's had almost a complete sweep of wins in this uh, twin shot under 50s class race and as you can see some of the riders making the most of that little berm at the outside of the track to make the turn David Houston going through on the Tony Keg Honda and some of the other riders uh, deciding not to use the berm of course but usually the quickest way around the corner number 174 is uh, Alan Bott once again but it's now the last lap for our race leader 147 Gavin Robertson just uh, looking to pick up our second place rider which uh, looks to me like it's still uh, Michael Smith so as a race leader Gavin Robertson heads across on his last and final lap it's yet another win for the man from Resyth at number 147 Okay, we're back to the individual races once again. This is the pre-68 and pre-75 combined race. So uh, once again, this is not a team race, but an individual race. So it looks like it's a good start by at number 44. That's Jonathan Bethel on the CCM. As the riders all make the uh, move into turn one and head back to the far side of the track. So... Hopefully we'll get some good racing from these guys in this combined pre-68 and pre-75 individual race. So as we look to our race leader, it's number 44, Jonathan Bethel. Of course, uh, one of the sons of the late great CCM man, uh, John Bethel. They're just coming down the hill there, that's number 32, that's Andy Dykes on the KTM Andy of course used to live 
in this area many years ago but now uh, lives and works in Australia and has uh, made the move over to Drumlandrig Castle for this classic uh, scramble event this weekend. And as I mentioned, the weather conditions uh, a far cry from what it was on the Saturday with the uh, dismal uh, fog and damp and sticky track, but the track is dried sufficiently now to let these uh, bikes uh, get a bit more speed. So here is your race leader, it's uh, 44, uh, Jonathan Bethel on the Alan Clues uh, CCM bike. Jonathan of course riding with the number 44 which was his father's uh, personal uh, racing number so it's good to see that John's uh, keeping his dad's memory alive with that uh, racing number. Number 585, uh, that's uh, Steve Bent on the Faber BSA. Number 122 going through, that's uh, Fergus Moody on his uh, BSA racer. Uh, 32, Andy Dykes again on the KTM. But it's the man from uh, Kendall who is uh, your race leader. It's number 44. It's uh, Jonathan uh, Bethel. Uh, this, of course, is the individual race for the pre-68 and pre-75. And this will be the penultimate race of this Drumlandrig uh, Castle weekend. So one more race to go. So we're looking at our race leader as he starts his last and final lap. It's going to be a win for this man, number 44, Jonathan Bethel, on the Alan Clues at CCM. Okay, next up, it's his second last race of the day. This is the twin shot over and under 50s and 60s individual race. So we have the at Drumlandrig Castle Grand National at race after this particular race which will finish off all the racing action from this two-day event here at the castle. So looking to the far side of the track it's number 350 that's Ryan Glendinning. Second looks like it's David Bateman on the four-stroke Honda. <laughs> looks like a couple of riders have had a little uh, coming together there. One of the riders looks like it's uh, Graham Smith on the uh, 400 Suzuki but uh, here is your race leader it's number 350 the man from Penrith it's Ryan Glendinning second is David Bateman on the four stroke Honda number seven there coming through is uh, Jimmy Aird on the CCM so uh, Jimmy also doing well in this uh, combined uh, over and under 50s and 60s race so as they come across the line there is your race leader it's number 350 Ryan Glendinning waiting, waiting on the second placed rider which looks like it is it's David Bateman in second position coming through in fourth is number seven Jimmy Aird on that uh, flying uh, CCM bike Jimmy of course was an ex works CCM rider uh, back in the day and as you can see Jimmy's lost uh, none of the speed and style that he had uh, back in the day. And Jimmy of course was uh, nicknamed uh, the Crab. Uh, nothing to do with his uh, personality of course but it was more to do with uh, Jimmy's riding style where he's sort of crouched over the front end of the bike and it's that crab style that, uh, that gave uh, Jimmy uh, that particular handle. So here is your race leader. It's number 350 from uh, Penrith, sorry, that's Ryan Glendinning on the 81 490 Michael. Ryan, uh, one of uh, Cumbria's uh, top racers in the twin shot class. Now number 159, that's Paul Mollett from Devon. Paul, of course, uh, this time riding a, a Michael when he, earlier on in the weekend's proceeding he was riding 
a CZ machine. Number seven, uh, the Scott Leathers owner, Jimmy Aird, on that uh, very quick uh, CCM. And of course, Jimmy's racing career has been well documented, so you don't need any further information from me. So your race leader is still this man, number 350, Ryan Glenn Dinning, who is leading uh, this combined twin shock over and under 50s and uh, 60s individual uh, race. One more race, of course, to go for the last race of the weekend, so uh, stay tuned for that. Number 159, it's Paul Mollett going through once again. Coming towards us, number 412, that's uh, Dominic Bratt. And uh, as you can see, a lovely evening to finish off this weekend of racing here at Drum Landwig Castle. On the left side there, that's uh, Graham Smith on the 400 Suzuki. Graham also rides a, a very quick uh, IT 490 Yamaha, but has chosen the old uh, Suzuki to use this weekend here at the castle. Okay, that brings us to our last and final race of the two-day event here at Drumlandwig Castle. This is the Scottish Grand National. This is the final race of the day where all the top riders take part in one final bash. And uh, this could be a real cracker because we have the cream of uh, all the racing classes in this one uh, race here today. So this could be a very good uh, finale to this two-a-day event here at Drum Landwig Castle. There's Scott Maxwell on the CCM. A very fast bike. Number 25 is Craig Smith. Number 9 is Lewis Bell. Number 49 there is Paul Chiappa. Some very quick Ryan Glenn Dinning lining up once again for this final race. Gavin Robertson there, number 147. Number two is, of course, uh, Irishman Willie Burgess. Number 81 at the far side is Chris Cannon on the Suzuki. But uh, this could be a cracker of a race. So as they get underway and they all leave the line for the last and final race of the two-day event here at Drumlandrig Castle, we look to the far side of the track to pick up our race leader in this last race. It's number 147. It's Gavin Robertson on that Bill Brown 490 Michael second looks like it's David Houston number 18 is Michael Smith I think in third place Willie Burgess is in fourth place on the number two bike as they all head into the wooded section uh, for this uh, last and final race of the day So once again we look to pick up our race leader at the far side of the track. It looks like it's still Gavin Robertson, number 147. David Houston looks like he's still in second position. So as our race leader comes towards us, it's still number 147. David Houston is in second on the Tony Keg 480 Honda. Michael Smith there, number 18, is in third. Willie Burgess from Northern Ireland is still in fourth position but trying his damnedest to get on to terms with the front three bikes. There's Paul Chiappa just going through, Craig Smith going through, Scott Maxwell there on the CCM. Remember Scott did really well in his individual uh, races earlier on in the day's uh, proceedings. As the riders come from the wooded section and cross the start and finish line to start another racing lap. So we're looking at our race leader, Gavin Robertson, 147, who has uh, won almost every single race he's taken part in this weekend, other than uh, a second place, I think, in one of the races where 
He had a bit of trouble with his Michael, but he is ridden superbly all weekend. Second is number 148, that's David Houston. Third is uh, Michael Smith, number 18. He looks like he's been through the tapes of the track and got some tape wrapped round that uh, front wheel of his Michael. Number two there is Willie Burgess from Northern Ireland. Willie just can't seem to get on to terms with the riders in front of him at the moment. Uh, Paul Chiappa going through again. Craig Smith, number 25 from Dunfermline. Both these riders uh, travel and race together at uh, many of these uh, big twin shock race events. And so as the laps count down on this last and final race of the weekend here at Drum Landing Castle, you're looking at number 147, Gavin Robertson, who for me has to uh, get the Man of the Match award for the weekend because uh, Gavin just hasn't put a foot wrong on this Bill Brown uh, Michael all weekend apart from uh, when he had some mechanical issues but nevertheless he's uh, ridden superbly the entire weekend uh, here at Drumlandrig so we're just waiting on the rest of the riders coming through it looks like uh, David Houston is now being challenged by Michael Smith on that uh, Michael as the rest of our riders come through, number 9 is Lewis Bell. Uh, number 58, Scott Maxwell on that uh, GME uh, CCM. But for me personally, it's been a fantastic weekend of racing uh, here at uh, Drumlandig Castle and uh, it's still very hard to believe that we are being able to race these old vintage dirt bikes around uh, this hallowed ground in one of Scotland's most historic monuments. But as our front runners come towards us we're looking at the second place rider, I think that's uh, Michael Smith number 18, number 148 is still uh, David Houston on the Tony Keg Honda but uh, here is your race leader as he heads up into the wooded section of the track it's still uh, that man Gavin Robertson on the Maiko Gavin has just uh, been awesome this weekend on that uh, Bill Brown uh, sponsored bike so as Gavin starts his last and final lap of this very last race here at Drumlandig Castle. I hope you've enjoyed all the five videos from uh, this two-day event of uh, racing and uh, I hope you will uh, subscribe to my video channel if this is the kind of uh, content that you like to see. So just coming out of the wooded section it's number nine, that's Lewis Bell on the CCM well, there you have it, the last and final race from the two-day event here at Drum Landrig Castle. Now, I hope you've enjoyed all five videos that I uh, brought you from this fantastic weekend of racing. And uh, don't forget, if you like what you see, then please subscribe to my channel.